G'day guys and welcome, my name is Michael and I am the Dead Aussie Gamer here to share with you some of my tips, tricks, ideas and strategies for taking on tabletop role playing games. Today we're continuing our discussion on character backgrounds, looking at how to incorporate character backgrounds into our primary narrative. So first and foremost, let's uh, do a quick recap on last week. So character backgrounds, what we were discussing were three things that you need for every single character background. Number one, you need a personal investment, something that your character wants to do, something that they want to achieve, a quest, an ideal, a, a goal, something they strive for. More importantly, you'll need to have a why as well. So, you know, you wanting money, great, why? You know, that's important. Number two, you need to have an investment in the primary narrative. That is to say, what your GM has set as the premise of your adventure, you need to build a character that is invested in achieving that goal and going for that plot. The third is you need to have an investment in your party and its success. You need to be actively wanting your party members to succeed so that you can succeed in the narrative. That's bare bone basic. Uh, even if you have rivals in the group, even if you don't always see eye to eye, even if you don't even like the other players in character, uh, then of course you can absolutely express this, but your character needs to be invested in the success of the team as a whole. So why do we look at those three? Well, I'm about to tell you. Incorporating character backgrounds should be done in a way that paces the game. When we play a narrative, the narrative can be stretched out. If you play the same story for too long, what you'll find what happens is what we call story fatigue or narrative fatigue. And what it means is that people just grow tired of the story. I'm sure you've experienced it in your games before where your players just kind of go, yeah, we just kicked down the door. Okay, you know, no, we're not even going to loot the room. Yeah, just next room. Yep, let's go. Yep, okay, Jesus. No, okay, fight. Yep, yep, just kill it. Yep, throw it, fireball. Yep, everything. Okay, next room. What's in here? Oh, God. We, have we still not found this thing? When you feel that moment happening at your game, this is when narrative fatigue is going into narrative exhaustion. And we all know how many how bad that is in Dungeons and Dragons and Pathfinder and all that. Uh, so, um, so what can we do to prevent it? Well, character background, side quests. This is a great way for you as a GM to take a break from your narrative, to allow it to kind of simmer down, to let your players rest, recover, and just... Oh, take that breath, feel that sense of achievement for just a moment before you continue them on their adventure. Um, I use it very often for pacing. If I feel like my characters are starting to disengage, I'll start looking at writing my own um, little side quest. Something usually kind of fun, something off to the side, something that develops them, that shows them some growth. But most importantly, something that gives them a tangible achievement. Okay, and I want to say that again because I love the word and I love how my mouth enunciates it. Tangible achievement. That's it. Tangible achievement. That's what we want to see. Uh, because when you run an ongoing campaign, one that's very long, one that's very drawn out, you could find yourself looking for the ancient sword of Villahalla. And uh, this ancient sword was lost to the eon. So you go to a mountain and you ask an old man. The old man says, go ask the wizard. You go to the old wizard. The wizard says, it's in a dungeon. You go to the dungeon. You find our grave robbers have taken it and sold it overseas. And you go, damn it. And you've gone over there. And then you've gone overseas. And you've gone, I, I don't even know where I am. I haven't brought my cash with me. You know, look, listen, look, business or pleasure. Look, I'm looking for a sword. What does that count as? I digress. Uh, <laughs> I, I kind of lost my train of thought there. Uh, so, yeah. You go into all these things, and eventually you just get tired. You get exhausted because every turn, every corner is just another hook to the next part of the story. And that's fine for, a, for an adventure. There's nothing wrong with that. But it means that whenever you get to that cliff end, whenever you get to that point where you would have achieved something, the GM kind of snatches that away from you. Just as you're about to find the sword atop the mountain, BAM! It's not here! Or, you know, your princess is in another castle. You know, all these, these very classic tropes can wear down your player's morale. So to build up that morale, we incorporate side stories. And no better side stories exist than ones based around character background. Alright, so now that I've explained what, what it all is and why do we do it, let's talk about where we use this information. So, our player has told us about their individual background plot. It's something simple. Let's let's take let's take this character here. I like this character here. She's she's lovely. Um, she's a Pathfinder character uh, from the adventure card game. 
Uh, she, uh, from what I can see about her, she's got a lot of scrolls. She's a little confused as she's looking at a map. I'm going to say this, that she as an individual believes that she has heraldry in a noble family. And she is on a quest to try and prove it. Um, she has taken on the mantle of being a an arcanist, a master of the mystic arts, and uh, has uh, devoted her life to not only trying to find these uh, these noble documents uh, to try and prove her lineage, so that her family can remove themselves from squalor, but also to try and uh, earn enough money to support her family back home. So what that boils down to is the very simple quest of I need money. But I have a whole backstory as to why I need the money for. Investment in the story. Investment personally. From this point here, as a GM, you have two bits of bait that you can use. She is interested in my story because she needs money. And so that's the only link here, is the money thing. She, however, has the personal quest of seeking her nobility. So maybe I can add in a side quest here. Like, they've just arrived looking for this sword when they realize that there is a very lucrative buyer in the area as well, a collector of swords. And uh, this individual, she would recognize from uh, some of her documents as a noble of worth, and that he actually not only keeps the noble swords, but also the heralds as well. Like, so he's got all these shields with all these markings, and he might be able to pr provide an expansion to your already large catalog of noble records maybe he'll even have your heraldry among his collection all of a sudden an npc is created a story is created and your character is now personally invested in going and finding this noble because it's all about your character it's like wow, wow i'd really love to do this guys can we can we take a moment to do this here we come to obstacle number one and probably the biggest obstacle which is of course your party turning around and saying yeah we don't really have time for that now, as a GM, obviously, you have created this story because you want your players to explore it. And your players, on the other hand, are very focused on, you know, their achievements. They're like, okay, cool, we need to go do this, blah, 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 blah. This is where part three comes in for the character background. If you are invested in the success of the party and have been doing so throughout your game, your players, or the other players at the table, will feel more inclined to come and help your character on their quest because whether or not you intended it because everyone's got an investment in the main plot and you have been actively pursuing the success of the main plot and pursuing a personal investment in their success they now have a personal investment in your success. So you as a player now have all the fuel you need for your other teammates to say, okay, yeah, no, look, we've got some time. Let's let's go explore this. Let's go do this. Let's help this person out because this person is awesome. You know, when we were fighting the orc and she, uh, you know, used her bardic song to make sure that I didn't fall down on my ass when, you know, it started swinging at me. It was, yeah, this person's awesome. Yeah, let's absolutely help them out. This is why those three things are important. The first will give your GM fuel for the narrative. The second will give everyone in the party common ground. The third, make sure that everyone is on good enough terms that if you need to stop what you're doing in the main quest for a favor for one of the other players, you have built enough of a reputation and enough goodwill that they will be willing to help you out on that side quest. And that's it. That's, I mean, that, that's pretty much uh, how you go about it. So there are plenty of ways one can can use and incorporate um, backgrounds besides the side quests. Now, as I mentioned, side quests are great for like you know breaking up pacing and stuff like that. But if you really want to, you can actually incorporate character background directly into the main story. Now this is kind of risky, and I will point this out. Um, if you are going to look at your mainstream campaign being focused around, let's say, a character then you need to make sure that there is enough side quests that the other players don't feel like you are favoring this one person. Nothing is worse than when your players start to act jealously because you are focused entirely on another person. Now, you could have written the, the, the entire backstory around this person's character because, you know, yeah, you had this really cool idea and they said, hey, I want to play an Arcanist. And you said, hey, I've got a really cool idea for an Arcanist hero. Maybe you could play this guy because he's important to the story. And they went, yeah, all right, yeah, sure, whatever. It doesn't matter what the scenario is. As soon as your players can kind of smell that you're giving one person a little more attention than everyone else, 
everyone kind of starts to, ch you know, either check out or kind of get really defensive, and and that just doesn't work great. Um, the best thing you can do at that point is again either a make sure that everyone's got a place in the mainstream narrative. This could be that. Uh, a great example actually is uh, Hell's Rebels. I love the Hell's Rebels adventure path. Um, I actually got to play some of it, um, I think beginning of last year or maybe the year before. And uh, it was basically you were a whole bunch of rebels. You were a group of people rising up against the evil tyrant overlord. And I loved it because we were all important parts of the story. Like we each offered a different thing. Like one of us was a tiefling and we got on with the tieflings in the slum. Um, another one of us was a uh, paladin who spoke up and rallied the people and and one of us was a, a kind of a shifty grifty roguey kind of individual who made sure that you know we didn't get shanked in the middle of the night all of us added something to it and we were each respected by the world itself because of it and that's fantastic right uh i never got more of a sense of us being important to the story than in that campaign so that was that was fantastic i loved it uh, and that's what you want to build. You want to build that sense that everyone is important to the story, not just one person. I mean, sure, have one of the players turn out to be the crown king, but save that for like kind of a reveal at the end. Don't lead on with that sort of stuff. Don't don't sort of kick in and say, oh, I see that I have four travelers that have come to get my quest. Oh, but, but do my eyes deceive me? Prince of the Underground! Yes! Ah, if I knew it was you, destiny has clearly labeled out you as the important... Have this sword! It is the sword of a thousand deaths. It is for you, forged by your father. Uh, or the rest of you, here's, here's 400 gold. There you go. Enjoy that. Uh, yeah, <laughs> don't, don't do stuff like that, because, yeah, you'll build, you'll build animosity between your players like, like that. Um... Now, the last thing I want to put out with the whole mainstream one is that when you do have the mainstream story circulating around a character background, background, introduce doubt, right? Red herrings are fantastic for this. Um, if your main character is the main character, as it were, if you have if you have a PC that, that will function as a main character, throw in some red herrings. Make it so that they believe that maybe the, the chosen one is someone else. Or maybe have it so that the chosen one is in the area or maybe it's one of the other party members or maybe all of you are potentially the chosen one one of you is we're not sure which you know leveling out that playing field is is kind of the, the name of the game and you want to kind of reveal the main character thing at the end of the game right because by the time you're at the end of the game everyone will be like oh my god that's amazing this guy the whole time oh my god i didn't even know Whereas if you spend all your time holding their hands, molly coddling them and going, Who's your good PC? Who's your good PC? Oh, yes, you're a good PC. Who's going to grow up and make the world a better place? Yes, you are. Guys, listen. Your baby brother needs the attention. Chill out. I'll give you your loot. You want to level? Who wants to level? Yeah, don't. Yeah, sorry. I apologize. Uh, can you tell that there are sour grapes here? Yeah, there are tons of sour grapes. Actually, you know what? I'll, I will leave you guys with a story. Okay, so last thing. Last thing. I'll give you a story. Um, so a long time ago, I played a character who was a, um, who was a plague doctor. And I, I may have mentioned this on Discord and other places. He was my cursed character. Uh, my cursed character because he's, long story short, he's been in like eight games. Not one has finished. He has never died. Uh, so he is, he's a cursed character. Every time he goes into a game, something happens to the GM and the GM disappears. Yeah. All right. So, um, anyway, I was playing this character and, um, we got told that there was this, uh, this, this really important person that we were supposed to go and meet with. So we're like, okay, cool. I, I am a, um, I was a herbologist, doctor, physician, and we had, you know, a, a wild person. We had a blacksmith. We had, you know, we were very mundane people. So we went out and we found this really important person, which was great. He was an NPC and we're like, oh, cool. We found him. He's cool. All right. Are you in any danger? No, no. Some goblins. Okay, cool. Come back to town. Brought him back to town. The whole town was being attacked and stuff like that. So naturally we went, okay, cool. Let's get our stuff out and let's, let's get ready for a good battle. And the big guy came in and the NPC killed everyone. And we're like, all right. Yeah. Wow. This guy's actually, you know, pretty tough. Why? I mean... Why did he need us to save him? But, yeah, I mean, yeah, well, yeah, good on you, mate. Yeah, you, you rock, you, oh, you're so cool. 
We then got told that there was this big meeting up in a kingdom nearby where they were going to discuss the matter of the goblins and orc alliance that had happened. So we were like, ooh, this is pretty serious. Okay, cool. We should, we should, you know, go there. It's like, oh, no, it's, it's only for council members. Oh, well, well, can we go anywhere? I mean, I mean, as soon as we find out when the council breaks, we'll, you know, get to know and we'll come back and we'll help. And they're like, well, we want you to go, but we want you to take the NPC you just saved because he's actually a member of the council. And we're like, oh. So what will we be doing? Are we, like, holding his bags? or No, 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 we want you to protect him. Oh, okay, we're going to protect him. All right, yeah, we can do that. Yeah, okay. Well, uh, show us the charting maps. and Okay, cool, we got these maps. Okay, you want us to take the ocean route here? Oh, you know, the ocean route here takes us right through cult territory. Um, maybe we should go across the land here once we get to this point. No, because you are not important. And you are, in fact, not the main NPC, who I am. We will go this direction because that is what we shall do. And the cults will not cause us any problems. Oh, we're attacked! Oh my god! Oh, there's cultists everywhere! Oh, they've got... Oh, they pulled Jerry into the river! Oh god, why? <laughs> As you can see, our characters did not like this game. Our players did not like this game. Uh, the game was boycotted, mostly because, yeah, we, we, we just spent half our time doing little more than being bellhops. Now, I believe that there is obviously another problem with that, but this is the furthest that you can get from incorporating your characters into your story. This is literally the opposite of that, because we were neither acknowledged as people being in the setting, the NPCs didn't know we were there. We didn't we didn't make any relevance to the main quest. We had no development for our character backstory, and it was just it was in the air. It was vanished. That is a terrible game, uh, and I do not recommend anyone do it. The importance of playing characters in these games is that you are the important thing. You are the center of this story because the only reason your entire universe exists is for the players that are sitting at your table and the characters that they are playing. Acknowledge it, you know. Uh, I have heard many schools of thought, many GMs coming up to me and saying, well, I like to play a persistent world where my players don't matter. Well, yes, that's fine, but when you run a game, they're important. They're the most important, because in fact, if you didn't have them, you'd be sitting alone in a room talking to yourself. Which, while I do that, case in point, I'm doing it right now, uh, while you do that, it is not a game. It is not, it is not how games are, are, are run. Um, you know what? Some players like that. And they like the whole idea of being unimportant to the story and, and look, oh, all this other stuff is happening, but I don't know. I feel like my ego is too big for that. So if you guys like those kind of stories, let me know. You know, I love people challenging my ideas and I highly recommend if you challenge my ideas, leave a comment, say something. Say, Michael, you're wrong. All this is garbage. Your ideas, uh, your, your advice is garbage. Uh, you know, let me know in the comments because, you know, that's how I get better. Um, so yeah, incorporate character ideas. Big recap. Make sure your character backgrounds have three things. Personal investment in your own quest. Investment in the narrative that you are sharing with your other PCs so that the other PCs and you have common ground to work from. Number three, make sure that your character, your personal character, has an investment in the success of every single other member of the group. This will build willpower so that when you have your character moment, when you have your character story come to life, they are willing to help you out. If you miss out on any of these steps, generally speaking, you are going to struggle with character backgrounds and trying to flip them into the game. Thank you very much, guys, for listening. I hope you guys enjoyed it again. Leave a comment below. Tell me about some of the best moments that your characters have been incorporated into your adventure by your GM. And link the GM as well. I mean, like, I'd love to meet more GMs who, like, do this sort of thing. And uh, as always, guys, hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. If you want to check us out, head on over to our Facebook page at facebook.com slash deadaussiegamer. And if you want to come chat with me directly, I hang out regularly on Discord at discord.me slash Dead Aussie Gamer, or there'll be another link in the description below, because I think that link's kind of broken. Uh, if you want to help us out uh, by being one of our cheeky Patreons, then head on over to our Patreon channel, uh, pa www.patreon slash Dead Aussie Gamer. Now, uh, another side thing there is I am trying to get as many people involved as possible. I am going to try and pull myself out of the gutter, out of Perth, 
and uh, get to Gen Con in 2019. So if you guys w feel like uh, helping me out with a very Merry Christmas, then uh, consider signing on to be one of our cheeky goblins. So for as little as a dollar a month, that is to say $10 in 10 months, um, if everyone gave us a hand with that, then, you know, you might see me in America and I'll be there with, uh, my bad dinner and hopefully with Master Guy and a whole bunch of other people and we'll chat and we'll, we'll RPG and we'll do all sorts of other things and I'll run games and I'll be with that weird Australian guy that, you know, no one understands because I keep talking about quackers and no one knows what the hell a quacker is. Um, and so, yeah, till next time, guys, as always from the Dead Aussie Game and make sure that you game hard or die trying. Have a good one.